As far as cable stuff goes, I didn't love Arsenal. No? Their, their other stuff was good. Yeah, it looked, their light press looked phenomenal. Yeah, everything looked yeah. good. Oh, okay. Uh, I just didn't really love their cable stuff. So it's like a trophy wife that just lays on her back. Yeah. Looks good, but performance is shit. Yeah. 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 That makes sense. Yeah. You guys ever thought about it? You figure mashed potatoes is just... Irish guacamole? Yeah. Yeah. It is true, it is true. And to be alive if you can't do that. You ever thought of that one? My secretary asked me that today. So what? Is mashed potatoes just Irish guacamole? No, what'd you say after that, though? My secretary asked me that question today. That's, that's, it's been it's a meme, great mind it's a meme that, uh, right river. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, so Dean, you know Dean. Yeah. Big fan of the show. He's like, his sister came to the office today. She works at CN and she's, she rolls in and I have only met her once or twice at Dean's wedding and shit, but it's like Dean with a longer mullet. It's pretty much what it is. Same personality. Dean probably looks better. Um, <laughs> she was making fun of me, so she just listen to her podcast. So I'm gonna trash her, and uh, so she's like, "Oh, you guys run over the office?" I'm like, yeah, I did. Like, we were, I did, we did. Yeah. Um, she's like, "It looks good." I'm like, "Yeah, actually, we renovated a bunch of the office. I said, actually, we have an office." Like, I kept saying because Dean's dad works for me too now, and I'm like, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna hire the whole family yet." Yeah. And I'm like, "Actually, we have an office that's perfect for you." And she's kind of very not the old fashioned makes up for her husband type person. She's like, "Oh, really?" So I take her through the whole office and walk her in the kitchen. She's like, you're a piece of shit. She just lost, are you? <laughs> <laughs> She's not Dude, impressed. You're on fire today. <laughs> She's not impressed with me at all. Oh, that's great. <laughs> oh, no, look, I'm like, she's like, that's not funny. I'm like, I'm like, do you know why God made woman with small feet? She's like, no. I'm like, she so can get close to the sink to wash her damn dishes. <laughs> we know why you never buy a woman a watch. No. There's a clock on the stove. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why do, why do you buy your wife white aprons? You could have just left it at why yeah. do you buy your yeah. wife? <laughs> yeah, to match the appliances. Oh, perfect. Yeah, same thing, yeah. <laughs> that's the same thing instead of the short feet. So if you have a wife with long feet, that's why they have the indents underneath the cupboard so she can still tuck right up. There you go. Oh, the indents under the cupboard. Yeah. Yeah. I thought you, you said the kick, covers. The, the kick plate. No, no, no. I know, <laughs> I know what you're saying. Just <laughs> I think I don't know my cabinet talk. It's almost going to judge me. Whoever runs that Whiskey Tango podcast YouTube page can suck my balls, too. Why is that? Dude. <laughs> don't look at me. Don't, I don't. Oh, don't look at oh, me. Oh, he's taking shots at me. That's what it was. No. <laughs> he's like three-hour goal seminar. He's laughing at me on the YouTube video. I'm like, you motherfucker. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's uh, the host who's not here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He talks real big behind your back, actually. Does he? Yeah. That makes sense. That yeah. makes sense. The same guy who won't show up to your gym to train. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So those voices that are about four foot seven tall that really are loud. Yeah, it's those little Taco Bell dogs. He's the <laughs> he's the human embodiment of uh, <laughs> Taco Bell Chihuahua. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! So second week, I guess welcome to the 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 petty side of strong and petty. Strong and yeah yeah strong in petty or in petty in petty yeah <laughs> welcome to episode one of in petty, petty. <laughs> <laughs> episode forty uh, forty. Through four, 44. 44. I can't even count that high. I think that's four times 11. That's 43 and a half more than I thought we'd get done. Yeah, not too bad, actually. Doing all right. Yeah, yeah. this is, uh, you guys are rocking it. Yeah, I'm pretty excited, actually. It's been a good run. It's been a good run. Just kidding. Make that sound <laughs> bad. Make that sound horrible. It's been a good run. Um, and after uh, 42 episodes, we have an official sponsor. Yes, we do. And they're still with us. We haven't scared them off. We have not. Maybe, maybe the, the feminist jokes at the beginning were, uh, <laughs> we'll see, see if they did it. Good thing a male realtor. Yeah. Can we say real? It's not like masseuse where they get offended, where you call realtor instead of stewardess. A real estate agent. You know, just say a massage service, you call them masseuse. Yeah. Things yeah. Violent. So shout out Jeremy Weens Realty on Instagram. Follow him with Jeremy Weens Realty. Um, he's our first sponsor we have and a loyal friend of the show. Uh, good friend of mine. And uh, loyal fan shares all our stuff actually, and he gets a lot out of it. He actually really likes a lot of the talk. So actually, an absolute stranger who reached out to us and sponsored the show. It's pretty crazy. Uh, so if you're a listener who doesn't know us, feel free to do the same. <laughs> we accept <laughs> forms of money in cash, Bitcoin, sexual favors. Those are small favors. 
<laughs> very small. No such thing as small space. No, there's no such small space. actions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, speaking of that, so I told Dean they were talking about his sisters there, and I'm like, something about, you know, oh, actually, I, my partner Scott walked in, and I'm, I look at Dean's dad. So it's Dean, his dad, and his sister on the room. Like, these were the strongest swimmers you had, Ronnie. <laughs> like, genetically not gifted at all. I'm like, yeah. Dean's the epitome of why they call people cock Asian. He just puts his head down. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what's new? What's new with these, you? That's a good one. So these are the strongest swimmers you had. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Uh, I got a call this morning. Uh, let's let's hop into the training thing real quick before I forget. Um, call from a friend of mine, not a client, but I train with him. And he's like, I just talked to a guy uh that told me like i should have a banana after workout oh yeah um and i was like yeah you should yeah sure and he goes i thought that was bad so i i, I got into like a banana is never bad for you no you, you know it's it's using the wrong terminology and then and then to to deepen it for him a little bit is is like uh you're not a an eight percent body fat guy where the timing of that banana will will change for you. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, and, and, and I kind of took my stance where I'm like, if fruit is is the problem in your diet, you don't have these love handles. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. The banana's um, not what's causing this. The, the banana's not causing it. Yeah. And, and and I've heard a lot of people throughout the, the, the years and years of doing this, um, you almost feel like it's a crutch for them. Yeah. Where don't don't mind the the forty two ounces of alcohol I had over Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, <laughs> yeah. uh, and don't mind the all you can eat ribs at Montana's. Yeah, I just haven't been having. My and it's own. not the ribs; it's the sauce. It's the sauce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, they wouldn't. They wouldn't. But that's not why they're fat. Ribs without it's because they just found out about the banana yeah. after the workout. Yeah, yeah. the banana is the reason they look down and don't see their banana. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the reason. How do you uh, your approach with that question? How do you... I'm guessing so this guy's probably similar to body fat composition than me. No, no, no. He's uh, about 6'2", um, kind of 210-ish. Oh, so he's not, he's, he, not, he's not that overweight. He's not fat, but he, he's still big enough yeah. that the I, banana I, I, isn't the game changer. Yeah, I've, I've had that where guys are... They won't eat certain foods or... You know, a lot of a lot of it now is the intermittent fasting. That's that's the go-to for guys. Um now, now, when I get asked about that for post workers, I'm like, and I and I learned something from you guys about that actually. That still stuck with me, like training kids. Um, if you can get them to drink protein to shake, perfect. But if you can't, at least get them to try drinking a chocolate milk after workout. If that's all yeah. they have, that it has your, your your protein, your fat, your sugars, everything that you kind of need. Maybe not the right ratios, but if that is the best you can do for kids who also don't, parents can't afford protein shakes. Yeah, that is like the second best choice in a sense. Yeah. Um, and I want to say you guys told me that if, if, all, if all they can get is chocolate, milk, and a banana after workout, that's perfect. That's great. Yeah. And uh, see, so yeah, but guys are off like that. They'll, they'll, want, it's, it's, they'll, they'll hear something because they're, they're failing at their diet and they're failing at their, their drink and they're failing everything else. But they hear something now that is taboo or wrong. And they're like, oh, and it gives them this little sense of hope that that was the problem the whole time. Yeah. That, oh, it's, it's, yeah, it's not the fact that I ate four cookies this morning and dipped them all in my coffee that yeah. I had flavored creamer in. I was going to say, and speaking of that coffee, yeah. it was half cream. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I mean. And, and, and I'm seeing that in my office, friends. I have, with cold days, all my workers are in the office. We just give them shop work. And I, I myself, am a flavored creamer, dude. So I, I drink uh, espressos, but I use a flavored creamer. And we're buying like one liter French vanilla creamer. Flavored creamers. creamer. Yeah, flavored. <laughs> flavored creamer. Yo. Hold and, on. Uh, what does a flavored creamer look like? <laughs> uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> that's the one's Devin wrapping. That's what that is. And uh, the guys go well, through I like got, a, I got the shipment of your creamer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the guys are going through a one liter creamer in two days, and I'm looking. And they're, and they're doing fifty fifty in coffee. Fifty fifty. Oh man. Yeah. Now there's also the dude that's doing that like doesn't have eight percent body fat on him. Like there's nothing yeah. left of the guy, so it's kind of bullshit. Yeah. Because if I do fifty fifty, I just keep turning into what I'm turning into. Oh, totally. Yeah. 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 It's not been a great, great, great start to the year. <laughs> you you did that. Whatever you want to call it, no with carb, Danielle. no. Yeah, uh, if it if it has a cool name that you can package or it doesn't, um, you did really well with that. But the bounce back on the other side is tremendous, dude. I've never, yeah, 
two thirty nine, two sixty nine in a matter of like eight weeks. Now that's, that's I could use some self control, and I went on a holiday and just drank and did whatever I wanted. Yeah, you know, so that was a big. But not when you're at the bar or at the Stogies, I was always out smoking cigars and having a drink at night and just eating whatever I want. I'm gonna hold it. I'm doing what I want. Yeah, sugary drinks. Oh, you go for lunch. Oh, I'm gonna have a margarita. Oh, I'm gonna have a pina colada. Oh, I'm gonna have you know a double rye with not diet coke. I'll just get whatever, right? Because usually I'll drink dry or I'll drink with pressed if I drink. But yeah, yeah. So it's it's yeah. That was that was a bad bounce. It was ever since I ate that apple. It is. That was literally the turning point. It's like point. the banana, man. Like, yeah. you gave me that apple. I feel like I'm back. So maybe in, they're onto something. Back in the Garden of Eden, and my wife <laughs> gave me the wrong apple. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, not only did he realize he was naked, he was also fat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I thought I still had my loincloth on because I couldn't see it. You know, <laughs> you know, it's like just like to say why 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 are women always they don't know what to get for supper or don't know what to eat because last time they chose a meal they do humanity for alternative. <laughs> that is a small niche joke. <laughs> small niche. If you don't know what to talk, well, go read uh, go read Genesis, I guess. <laughs> no, that's um, faith based jokes. We're online. Nah, just checking, just checking. Dude, a whole episode of faith based Based jokes. jokes. <laughs> that would be tough. I'd have to get somebody else on here. I yeah. actually asked Pat to come on today because, as you can tell, not like you would notice him anyways, but Tyler's not here. And uh, so I asked Pat, he doesn't say, but he couldn't make it. He's like, I'll rain check. But. Next time, I figured we'd bring him into here, but didn't work out so defend well. Defend himself, yeah, defend himself. <laughs> uh, okay, another nutrition, and this is one that I'm doing with uh, a young football player of mine, not a big eater, but buck 35 receiver, really talented, very yeah. fast, and uh, really strong for his, his size. Uh, grade 11, I guess, middle of grade 11 right now, 135 pounds, yeah. Wow. Short. Okay. Um, but maybe he's like 140 now. Like, I'll, I see him after this, and I, I got to check in. Um, but he's got a 315 squat to, to my depth, like Holy side shit. view calling depth. Yeah. Uh, we hit 185 bench uh, last year. Um, I don't deadlift with him because it won't make him a better football player right now. Yeah. Um, but not a big eater. So... Last year, I, I kind of worked something out with him, and it worked really well. And uh, and then this year, he asked me, like, right when we started training, he's like, are we doing stuffing again? And I'm like, if you're into it, I'm into it, man. A box of stuffing? So only on the days we train. Yeah. Um, he has to shake immediately post-workout, have dinner, and then before bed, uh, shake with a box of stuffing. And then his alternative options are uh, dry measure, a uh, cup of rice, or dry or uh, two cups of, of potatoes. Anyway, hmm. and his I've uh, never, heard, never heard the stuffy one before. Well, his his uncle heard about it, and his uncle like no training background, but he, he yeah. lifts. I, I've never met the guy. They just relayed it to me, and he's like, "There's like, why aren't you having like cleaner?" cleaner foods yeah. and whatnot. And uh, so my answer to this, and I, just to chat with you about it, uh, my answer to this is for a kid or any client that small to put on weight in an off season where your time is limited. Yeah. Um, plus their metabolism is so high at that age and they're so active. You couldn't eat enough to put weight on if you're naturally a smaller dude. That makes sense. Yeah. So, so you gotta you gotta cheat it and get dirty carbs in there. The kid, the kid's ripped, like every, six pack. He's got little traps and pecs. Everything we want to be. What's that? <laughs> everything we want to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like athletic, fast, ripped. Yeah, and and he's putting on weight and strength. Yeah, which is, and I knew that would work because yeah. it's just like, and the, stuffing's tasty. That's why I did stuffing over rice yep, or potatoes sense. originally. Yep. And then I give those as alternatives for when you're sick of stuffing. He never left the stuffing. He's like, I just choked. He's like, like those hot dog eating comp. This yep. is this is his words. He's like, like the hot dog eating competitions. He's just like, spoonful of stuffing, mouthful of water. Spoonful of stuffing. He's like, maybe my dad just play video games to take my mind off it, and I just get it down. As I'm like, that's a kid who wants it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's is it the best choice? Hell no. No. Will but, it put the weight on him in the small window of a football off season? Yep. Of course it will. Well, do you remember back in the day it was uh, Scott Kuman had the same thing. He could only, with how hard he trained and how much effort he put in, he couldn't eat enough to keep 
the weight that he needed to. Yeah. So he would eat, from what I was told, from what uh, Mike Dolan told me, you guys told me, he would eat like four or six heaping tablespoons of natural peanut butter for bed to help uh, keep the weight on. I never knew that about Scott, but nope. yeah. I swear, it's, I, I heard that it's a guy's just eating, plow natural peanut butter for bed because then at least you're sleeping in it. Man, that's why I leave peanut butter out of my house because you think you can like work it in your diet you and you're like, I'll have a tablespoon a day. <laughs> Please, I'll eat half a jar throughout a day. Darren Milling always keeping up me doing bodybuilding. Devin, you're, you're, what kind of peanut butter? A t- tablespoon. Yeah, but a tablespoon has to be flattened out. Ah, it sounds kind of stupid you say it that way. Devin's Darren. like, no, the spoon is literally the size of a table. <laughs> yeah, like it's, you know how high you can round a spoon if that's some thick-ass peanut butter? Yeah, like, well, it was crunchy, and then I figured the peanuts in it. It wasn't really heaping. It was just the peanuts. I'm the dude who takes peanut butter and then... Puts peanuts on top of yet like a peanut butter parfait. <laughs> yeah. Then puts a peanut butter sauce on top of that peanut butter. It's all in the spoon, baby. Yeah, peanut butter is a dangerous one for me. Yeah. I just want to say I can actually fit into this sweater again. This is uh, this is a sweater I wore when I was training for boxing. It's still definitely tight right around here, but uh, no, I, ever since I quit drinking, I'm just all these old clothes are able to fit again. You know, if you melt anything, it can fit into things you just pour it in, right? That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, maybe De- Shut maybe your mouth. <laughs> maybe Devin can hire you. Hey, there we go. You can get you can, can you get rid of my dick do disease? <laughs> where, my oh, be- where my belly stick. I've already dick heard do? about your dick do. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do much. I sit at a slope now. I was like, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's not fun. Wait, you're what, one of my five years on you. Uh, what are you? Forty one. Forty three. Seven years. Seven years. Doesn't get any easier. Are you 43, like turning 44 this year? Uh, just turned 43. Okay, yes. Yeah, so you're yeah. six, 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 school yeah. years. Everything's always better in school years. <laughs> yeah. It's weird um, how that works. It's like hockey players. When yeah. they, they talk about, a, oh, he's an 81. And for years, I'm like, what, what do you mean? Like, I just have to do the math? Just tell me old this little prick is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, Jonesy? Jonesy's an 81. You're like, speak English. <laughs> <laughs> and then they... Run the hair back. Just, yeah. Yeah. Well, I was talking to uh, Rody Kenny today. He was saying, I didn't know this because I've been all Hawks alone, but they got rid of all the words like squirts, bantam, midget, and now it's U18, U17, yeah. U16. There's no more, even squirts, they have, uh, he says intro now or something because squirts is offensive. I'm like, it's not like rassing the kids not with their mom to does me. OnlyFans. I love a good squirt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, your mom does OnlyFans. So we can't say it's squirts anymore. Like, yeah. Like, how's, you know, and supposedly midget's a bad term. And I don't know, like, so I got a good midget story. Oh, I can't. Uh, that was uh, like a regional basketball, like I think grade seven and eight or whatever, okay. eight and nine, whatever it was. Um, and, and every part of Winnipeg had a different color shirt, but the same logo. And it was just midget, midget basketball. Yep. And those were our jerseys, whatever. And uh, I used to go to basketball camp in North Dakota at University of North Dakota. Oh, shit. And uh, one dorm was was the boys, one dorm was the girls, and then the one set of courts was the guys, and then the other. Set. So they they keep us pretty separated, but you have yeah. chances to like interact and and whatnot. And I loved this midget basketball shirt; like it was it was comfy. I used to balling in it, whatever, blah yeah. blah blah. And uh, this this girl, I think she's from Minnesota, like stopped me one day and was like. Quite often, I was known as like the Canadian guy. Oh, and uh, she's like, "You guys like have midget basketball up there?" <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, you, "You like I was I was too young at the time to think I'm being pranked, but you're looking at someone like you're not this dumb, <laughs> are you?" Uh, but she she was. Oh, she actually thought it was legit. She le- legitimately yeah. thought, she like... Had, yeah, and they dunk on full full yeah. nets, too. These guys yeah. are hair crazy. the color of Devin's mic cover or what? <laughs> 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 Not back then. Yeah, I take everything that woman with this hair color talked to me about. We have deep conversations about life and love. Yeah. <laughs> <Spectrums>. Pronouns. <laughs> oh, um, shit. Oh, Tyler's going to be so disappointed in this episode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We got a couple of diet questions. Told you guys there. we need told you guys we need structure. You can't just roll in there. Oh yeah. He's gonna come and he's like, We Watch don't even need this. structure. He's like, I printed out a script. For yeah. you guys. Devin's not allowed talking about <laughs> spectrum or anything. Yeah. No Call of Duty words and 
Oh, oh shit. All duty words. Anybody try the Devil's Inch last week? No. No. No? No. Yeah, you? No. No. I thought about it, but by the time I thought about it, it was, it was done. Maybe next week's... Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe next week's <laughs> session, yeah. I'm trying to, trying, to, trying to go through it in my warm-up. <laughs> <laughs> maybe wear my, uh, if I can find it, my powerlifting belt. Shit. It's really tight. <laughs> <laughs> like it's going to fit through one of the, the, the holes or... It's not long enough. No, I, I got the 13 millimeters. That's the worst. <laughs> that's the worst. Uh, speaking of that, we had, uh, so two weeks ago now, we've been doing events at my gym on Sundays. A Sunday afternoon, I just did like an op- uh, Bushy, like Mocha Muffin. He, uh, he's he got a bunch of girls from Snap Fitness here in Steinbeck that are finally looking at getting an astronomy. So every year, Tyler does his log comp, and we generate a bunch of interest from new girls and new people in the sport. At least they come to the log, and then we try to sucker them into the season, right? Like, yeah. hope there's some carryover. Kind of like deadlift dreams. You get them in there, and you're hoping eventually they'll compete in a strength sport, in a sense. Like, yeah. hopefully just get them in. So last week, he brought three new girls, um, and they all came back this week, which nice. is really cool. Nice. Um, really cool. And and the, they're actually pretty strong girls. Um, I'm very surprised with, with the one. I'm surprised with all of them, but the one, she's the taller girl. She's probably five, nine. Um, got some muscle to her. Uh, never competed, never trained in nothing. And she came back this week, and uh, we did farmer walks. So and you really led in today's episode with those jokes to get to this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. <laughs> get rid of the whole female population or demographic or thing and draw them back in hopefully little game i like to call bait and switch yeah maybe maybe we'll just clip this to real so they'll bait back in Dem, um, dem's more of the uh the switch and bait <laughs> <laughs> i'm not good maybe i'm not so good at promoting but uh <laughs> if you like strong you have to do my shows <laughs> jokes on you yeah so we did farmer walks and uh, this girl, first time doing farmers, worked up to two ten a hand. I got guys that that I've trained, like new newbies in the sport, that don't pick up two ten a hand. I can guarantee you, the guy who runs that Whiskey Tango podcast page doesn't pick up two ten a hand. I highly doubt that. Yeah. He can't even put two ten on his back. No, he can't. He can't even count that high. Yeah. No, he doesn't. You know, <laughs> he doesn't know shit. Anyway, she picked up two ten a hand and walked. I want to say at least twenty five to thirty feet. She made it. I told her she made the turf. I'd give her a free sweater. And she tried. Um, which was, I, I was so, super impressed, man. That like 210, your Good. first time doing farmers. When I went to Brent's barn years back when I first started, I think that's what I was running. And I was like, oh, this is hell. And then we yeah. finished him off with the good old Imam Prowler. Ugh. Died. Yeah. So we let the girls go first. Uh, there were three, four that's new, terrible. four new girls and actually a new guy too. Six foot two, a uh, big guy. And, and he really wants to do the show. So he did, uh, we worked him up to like. I don't know, like, it's over 200 pound log, his first log, getting him solved, really, it looks like he's, he wants to do the novice show too. Uh, but the girls did the prowler first, and they wanted to quit right around that fifth, sixth set when everything really starts, when you just want to die. And yeah. you, now it's whether well, the fight or flight kicks in. Yeah. And they finished, and then we put the guys on there, um, Pat, Brian, this new guy, Dallas, Mocha, Clint Grad came out. I think they made five sets. Which is good. I mean, Pat and Brian do the prowler. They, I make them do it quite yeah. often. They always finish, but for some reason... I, Pat did a bunch of core work before, so he started doing. I just had him run through a bunch of core work, and then he did the prowler. And he just cramped it up, and he couldn't uncramp, and just maybe dehydrated. But um, actually, Mocha and Clint finished it. But I couldn't really? believe it. the girls were laughing because yeah. they're they're dying on the wall. They're just sitting against the wall, and you can just you can see they're having this come to Jesus moment of what yeah. Strawman like. I'm I'm trying to relate to them. This is how it feels at the end of a medley. Yeah. How exhausted right now is how you feel at the end of a of a max <laughs> yeah. chain drag medley. Exactly. Like, how you want to die, except you got us screaming at you like a bunch of idiots, and then you finish it. Is how it yeah. felt. Yeah. So um, super impressed. The Dallas guy, he was he, he wanted to keep going, but. Uh, Bad, bad asthma. And didn't bring his. Didn't think we'd do any conditioning work. So didn't bring any puffers. Was and he was he was struggling a bit. So like, no, okay. I'm like, I don't need you dying on my turf. Like, yeah. you'll be all right, buddy. Yeah. Um, but really excited. That's forty girls. A couple of them couldn't even make it. So I, I'm thinking my novice show. Like, we're gonna have a pretty. I think Tyler's got some new girls coming in. Brickhouse does. There are two at the gym I train at. You were and, talking about. And I, I've seen both of them since I talked about it last, and I just don't have a way to bring it up with them. That's not creepy. And, yeah. and, and it's today's gym culture that, that creates that. That does it. Yep. Um, where it, it's just, you want to pay a form of a compliment and maybe offer, and I'm not even offering my help because I don't want to. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I can't do what you guys do. But just be like, hey, I have two really good options and you should, should probably check this out. Yeah. Um, but how do you do that? Yeah. You it's, know? It, yep. Uh, one of them... Like her and I have 
we talked about her split squats once and, and kind of high and by. And the other one I've seen for like two years and she's just in her own world. She's never um, said a word to you. Not, nothing, not even eye contact. And, and you're just like probably six, one, six, two, <sighs> uh, good shoulder. Like you're just like, it's, it's there. If, if yeah. try it and see if you, you, you hate it or like it. It's like the fire smoldering. It just needs a little, yeah. a little air. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. And you see them doing these, <laughs> well, the, the, the young, the young one, trains pretty well um you can tell like at some point she's had a coach uh but the other one is just kind of like fit girl work and you're kind of going through the motions but and, hits the and, compound lifts no no it doesn't even do those not even like, oh, shit. like just and and you're like dang gum like what do we... you ever thought I of selling to... your soul and uh <laughs> yeah. being miserable the rest of your life in a sport yeah because i've got it for do you. i feel unaccomplished forever <laughs> <laughs> You yeah. want to compete for no pay? Yeah. <laughs> do you want to pay to do an adult recreation sport and make it your whole personality and turn your family against you? <laughs> <laughs> That's literally how it feels. Okay, here's my suggestion uh, for you. You make deep. direct eye contact. Let your mouth hang open a little bit. Stand there for about 10 minutes and then walk around. Hey, want to compete? See, but if I do that, yeah. you add in the crazy eyes, man, you guys think I'm retarded for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That was like, like what drooling? Right yeah, <laughs> this dude's been staring at the wall this whole time. You know, I'm trying to make eye contact with her. That was like, I can see it clearly. You've got a bright future in the sport. It's like I think I'll pass. Yeah, I've been where you are. <laughs> I've been in your position. No, and it, it's it's yeah. In a commercial gym, it's hard because of the culture that's created with Instagram and everything, and these girls. Not and, and this happens, to guys. Too, but but and it's not all girls. There's there's these odd girls that'll. Set you up for that. You make eye contact. You look in the mirror, and then what are you looking at? And they yeah. like, as they're taking their shirt off into their sports bra and just wearing a thong on the gym. And yeah. what are you looking at? What? Well, give me a break. Yeah, yeah. That's why I like. That's why I like my gym. We just there's there's one mirror, and it seems everybody can find it. Yeah. Um. But uh, it's just that's just it's not like that in my gym, which I'm really happy. Maybe that's a culture we've created. I was it's gonna say that's, thing. that's exactly what yeah. it is. And that's it was the same in your guys' gym. That that culture wasn't there when no. you guys went to the bodybuilding side more, like the commercial side. You got a little more of it. Uh, McDowell's gym. Yes. Uh, which is why when we moved from there, we made a, a point to go really in the opposite direction. Back to Midtown. Did you have any mirrors in Midtown? Um, Bathroom, maybe that's what it. No, no, in front no. Of the squat racks, I think. Didn't you? Were there? Uh, by the dumbbells. Oh, you're right. Yeah, you're at right. the very front. That is the request I have: is like, people like, can we get mirrors by the dumbbells? To, to like a small, like just enough to say we have them. Yeah, yeah, just enough for someone to take a selfie. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And maybe it's because us guys weren't good looking enough to take pictures and post on Instagram. Most mirrors mm. broke when we look into them. So. Yeah, like I don't know what I'm. What am I going to take a picture? Like, there's no angle that's flattering to me. I've always just kind of had a rule: if you look like you work out, you don't have to take pictures of yourself at the gym. I like that. I'm running with that. Yeah. Ah, I'll probably walk with it. Yeah, that's a good pace for you. Yeah. The only yeah. selfies I take is I take one down here and looking up, and I'm like, Ooh, that's what the wife looks up at. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've seen that one of like what you see versus what she sees, and it's. Uh, yes. Uh, who who played the the penguin? Oh. Uh, Devi- Devito. Danny Devito. Devito as the penguin. Yeah. He's like, oh. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> like, or the yeah, other one where it's pretty close. she spends three hundred bucks on her hair and does her makeup and this and that. Just you just stand at the end of the bed. It's just this like pretty much mean just like caveman stands yeah. at the end of the bed, just like, <laughs> and it's such a true statement. Oh yeah, like 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 I'm fortunate enough that my wife seven days a week she 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 does her hair. She always makes herself look good. If I come to work, she always she always looks good. She dresses always nicely. It's just been that way. And I just roll in and. Gym clothes, not giving a shit what I look like, and then she gives the I love you the way you are. And I'm like, I'm glad you're not shallow because because your husband's an asshole. Yeah. Like, yeah. like the fit guys are too hard to lay on. You're nice and comfy, <laughs> and the big ones hurt. Big ones hurt. Yeah. God, you, yeah. Damn it, Davey. Stone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yours is perfect. The big ones hurt. I thought I thought I was your one and only. <laughs> yeah, no one wants to lie on a gal's abs. You ever, you want to go camping and sleep on the rocks? Yeah. No, you want an air mattress. It's true. It's the way it is. You laid on a lot of guys with abs. Oh, you you're doing a little, a little jujitsu, weren't you? A little what? A little jujitsu, weren't you? Didn't I you still do? Yeah, that was there yeah. on Tuesday. Yeah. So I'm sure you got your brown belt there. <laughs> <laughs> That's eight years minimum for a brown belt. How did you play your cards right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I suck at jujitsu. I try, but man, I suck. 
You don't have a jujitsu build. It's uh, he's trying to show us all these techniques and stuff, and they're not made. Like our coach is 170 pounds. He's a black belt. And he's phenomenal. And he shows us all his moves. And these guys actually move. Oh, you got to put your leg through here, and you're gonna pull this way. And I'm like, I can't. My legs can't do that. Like, oh, you need to get in this position. Like, there's not enough room in my in between things for me to even do. So a lot of the moves he, he teaches. They are the there are there are what you need to do, but I gotta modify them for my fat ass. And yeah. then I'm going against like I have my buddy Clayton there, who's six two two seventy with a six pack, but he's a monster. Yeah. So when me and him are trying to do these things, none of us move that way. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, I'm gonna you know put your leg nowhere. It doesn't I don't care how if you sit on me, my leg's still not gonna fit behind my head. Like we're not doing these. And you need to roll in this position. So I find I got to modify a lot. So is it jujitsu's fault or yours? Uh, jujitsu. Yeah, okay. definitely, yeah. Is, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. You can tell it was made not in Western society where obesity is a pandemic. Yeah. Um, <laughs> another adult yeah. recreation And sumo wrestlers don't do jiu-jitsu There's no way Not a chance But those no guys way. are actually very flexible Mobile, flexible Unreal Yeah Yeah, yeah. Have you ever tried jiu-jitsu, no? Uh, a couple times Yeah? Didn't like it? Yeah. I'd, ra- I'd rather do like a boxing Yeah Yeah, it's too much like you're breathing in my face And, and you're dripping Yeah, it is. That, that was hard for me Because I, I, like I, I hate body odor and I hate mm-hmm. So I struggle with that But And I do And I'm gonna, I love boxing more like, I definitely yeah. love the art of boxing. Buddy man was on his high school wrestling team, and he said that they would, on purpose, they would not shower, not clean their clothes for weeks leading up to a match just to be more disgusting than the other person. That I, was a legit strategy. I would bite somebody. <sighs> yes. Yeah. That's uh, that, that just, yeah, that's gross. It's so, like, lame. That's your strategy yeah. is you're going to yeah, smell like. You go whatever, you do whatever you can to get that little extra advantage. Yeah. Oh. Disgusting. That's uh, the only reason, reason we didn't wrestle in high school. That's why I didn't do it. it wasn't because I wasn't athletic. Or... Um, wrestling's hard, man. Yeah. 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 I, but they didn't offer it where I was. I don't know if you guys. Uh, I don't do. think it's it's that. We didn't have football. In Manitoba. We didn't all. have football in our schools. Yeah. Um, we had to drive to Steinbeck, which was 25 minutes, and uh, no one could afford it back then. Yeah. Um, that is the downside to rural schools is you lose a lot of opportunity for. You're stuck with basketball, basketball, volleyball. You might get a softball team yeah. um, in school, and that's pretty much your options in small towns. A softball team? Yeah, they often have those, yeah. We had it. All the small towns have baseball diamonds. Yeah. yeah. And we had a dozen baseball diamonds at one point. Like, yeah. There was tons. Of where'd you where'd you grow up? Oh, Sorry, where did you get, my bad, where did you get older? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> good, good point. Uh, out in the White Shell and a uh, small town out there, and that's, yeah, that's the uh, same kind of thing. Well, actually, I locked out my principal of my school out there, he was a university level wrestler, and so he actually took a two week block of That's our high- badass principal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> talk and back to that guy. He, oh, he uh, like he he showed us like he was showing us for two weeks straight. Every gym class would be wrestling, and I really enjoyed it because I was actually noticed like something I wanted to do and could do. And then once that two weeks was up, never did wrestling again until I was in my uh, in my late twenties. And the oh, thing sure. he wanted to do was see his principal in a singlet. Yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> that's what he was talking about. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't wear underwear in these, right? Yeah. He actually showed up to my my um, my amateur match. He he showed up to uh, glad that went in yeah. a positive direction. Your yeah. your he christening. showed up in a singlet. Showed up to my christening. <laughs> tore it off and away he went. <laughs> Sorry, Gary, I love you. Night. Yeah. <laughs> oh shit. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, we didn't have those opportunities in small schools, but that is nice about the, the, the cities. You get those opportunities where we just didn't have that stuff. Yeah. Um, we were stuck to doing stupid things like... Throwing rocks at cars. Hockey. No, we would shoot Roman candles. Oh, yeah. That too. Yeah. At each other? Is no, we're just random eye? cars, we people's houses. We used to houses. have Roman candle fights. All yeah? the time. I was took one in the, the face. Holy shit. See, it comes screaming at you. Like, someone just pops around the corner and <laughs> you can't time them. Really, no, you but can't. You have like a, and then, and it's just, you just see it coming and... For sure, would be blind right now. Yeah. <laughs> did you ever strap? We did, but I've seen guys do it. They strap them to the bicycles, and they just chase it and they light it, and they're just cruising out the bicycles, trying to hit each other. That's pretty sweet. That's I've hilarious. never seen that. That's that. that's yeah. I bought one years back. It had nine Roman candles all woven together. There's just one giant tube, and so it shoots. I think if I'm correct, Roman candle has nine shots generally, nine to eleven, one of the two. I had that all. We we're, you know, shitheads. But oh, I had the one totally. that was nine strapped together, so it would shoot eighty-one shots. I think it was. Oh man, yeah. We just picked a certain house that we didn't like. Waited to, <laughs> waited to be on their deck in the dark. There, were a, there was an alcoholic guy that was a shithead. Nice. So he was in the corner of his, he had a trailer, and he would sit in the corner of it, 
wall here, front door here in the deck. We rolled up a night in the truck with the lights off and just drilled that thing with Roman candles, man. It was just tinging off the house tricks. It's all tin walls. This guy hit the deck, man. He was down. Pissed drunk on a weekend. You know the guy was, yeah. it was like one in the morning. You know the guy was hammered and just a bunch of kids flew up with riddling you full of Roman candles. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to make a joke about this maybe being someone in Devin's family, but the chance of it being true is <laughs> yeah. too hurtful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, he just finished beating me, so I went and got my Roman <laughs> candles. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, we were done back then. Um, That's just the way it was. Fireworks are kind of fascinating. We went to see them for New Year's. Yeah. And you're like, how? Just how? Like, the timing of them and the pattern. Uh, and it, It's one of the more fascinating things that I don't understand. Where did where the original from? I, I keep thinking because... China. I was just going to say, because I think back to much, I'm like, Mulan, man. They had all those ones in Mulan. That's got to be where it originated from, right? It's got to yeah. be China. But it must have been. Are you are you guessing that, or are you... 100% it is. No, I know. 100%. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. And that would have been, like, early, early years. Oh, that was, a, like, probably before AD became BC. And you you guaranteed that it was... That was figured out on accident. Probably. Just to get anything else, right? Like, there's no way that was... That's, that's the thing. Yeah. Like, I, how do you... Sorry, I'm... I made a comment that made me sound pretty dumb, and you guys are just making me feel a lot better. This conversation's so off the rails right now. <laughs> but but it, it completely stumps me where you go, how do you know this is going to go 30 feet in the air, and there's going to be nine things that make a loud crack at the same time and, yeah, and that, then I don't glitter understand. down to the ground? That's witchcraft. You develop totally. it before <laughs> safety standards. Yeah, it comes down to witchcraft. That's what <laughs> Sa- it comes safety down to. Safety last. <laughs> safety last, that's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm speaking of safety. Which this episode's all off the rails. Um, I'm the safety officer for our company for like construction safety oh, no. shit. Um, I've always I've done all the courses and the audit courses. I'm actually one course away from being a CSO. Now, do you make sure your forklift drivers are certified? Believe it or not, I just went and got a certified six months ago. So I'm Matt not, Dean I'm not coming back. <laughs> yeah, I know. I went. I'm like, I got to certify these guys. I got forklifts. I got them all certified. When we bought that KJL company too with the Moffitts, I got everybody certified to run everything. So. Yeah. Can I get Forklip certified just to put it on my Instagram profile? I'll just write you a fake one. Like I don't I'll just a... do the train the trainer one and just give it to you. Say what? I can just do the train the trainer one and then I'll Sweet. Yeah. Sweet. Certify you. No, so <laughs> so at the cabin this week, everybody candles helped me. We're... My ladder's not long enough to reach the top of the wind window. It's 20, 20 some feet inside the house, like on the vault. We're casing the windows finally. My buddy can't, like, I can't. I can't get there. For one, my moose head's in the way. We don't want to take the moose head down. And and he's like, just bring me that sawhorse. So and I know what he has planned. Like, we're going to set the sawhorse up to four foot and then put the step ladder on top of the sawhorse. And then, Devin, you hold the sawhorse steady while I climb the ladder and get up the sucker. And I'm like, Kendall, you know, this is like, every time we do something like this, I get hurt. Like, there's a reason I I brought them down to do the rafters in my cabin because the last roof I was on three, four years ago, which is why I still have the back injury, is... I'm like, oh, I can walk. It was a nine or ten foot wall. We're putting the first rafter. I'm like, I can walk that wall. No problem. I'll walk the wall. And uh, I'll, I'll tack that rafter to the, the bracing, and we'll just get cracking, right? And they're stabilizing the rafter with two two-by-fours on end, two guys in the bottom stabilizing it so I can hold on to it. Well, of course, the two-by-four slip, and the rafter goes flying. And I didn't know what to do because it's concrete, and I'm up ten feet. So I grab the rafter, and I do the whole loop around because the rafter's on the walls and flip with it. And uh, didn't go so well. I fell flat on my back from nine feet on concrete. I hit a guy in the back of the hill at the rafter with my weight, put his head into the stud. So he was sitting beside me pretty much out cold. He was just sitting there all like wobbly. He was injured. I ended up straining my lat, did some damage to my back. They came up with an MRI. The guy on the wall tore all his tendons, ligaments, his feet trying to stay on the wall. He managed to stay on the wall. Three of us were injured that day. Yeah. And that's I'm like, I'm done with roofs because I'm just too stupid. I just, I'm willing to take, ah, it's faster if I just do this. Like plumbing stacks frozen at my gym right now. And so we got sewer smell in the gym right now because the plumbing stack's frozen. Yeah. Well, my plumbing stack's 10 feet up on my tin roof in my shop, two stories in the air, which is full of snow. Now I got to somehow climb up that plumbing stack to thaw it out. And I'm not sure what I'm doing yet. So I got to figure that out after this episode. So if you don't hear from me next week, <laughs> I went up there. We'll chill and I went here, down uh, just as fast. Yeah. But I'm going to climb on the side that goes from the one roof to the second. So if I do fall, it'll just be I'll 20 do feet down to 10 feet. Or no, only a four foot drop. So 20 feet, 16, slide down eight. In the parking lot. I should be able to live through that. I feel like a Harry and Lloyd scene. Yeah. 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 Whatever screws ripped me up on the way down. um, I should be okay. But yeah. I actually have a question. Yeah. Regarding uh, back to training again. Now, uh, let's say you injure your back, maybe minor, pull something while you're working out. What's the best? What do you suggest doing to get back to lifting heavy again? 
First, ask Jess. Go, 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 see, go see a sports doctor. Um, get a scan. Get a get, make sure you have an extra scan. Let me know what's going on because I'm not a physio. Mm-hmm. That's my first thing. Because I don't need to get in shit for yeah. recommending something that I don't. Once you have a plan of attack, um, I'll let you take that because you have way bigger background of the injuries than I do, from what you've coached. Uh, well, I was going to say JHR reverse hyper and sleep on a hardwood floor, but a hardwood floor. <laughs> oh, it's way better. Yeah. Yeah. Let's try that. I mean, a really firm mattress, but you can't beat a, a guy with floor. abs. Huh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, a guy with abs. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I mean, you you get the X ray if it's if it's that bad, and you do your your athletic therapy. Yeah. Uh, but I but then I think you find a, a qualified like a a good strength coach, someone with a a, a history. Not walk into good life and, and hire the first nit with, with man <laughs> boobs that wants to sell you 500 sessions. Um, <laughs> also works at a supplement store. Yeah. 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 He's so got a discount code with his training. It's like you were uh, recording Whiskey Tango with us yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> That's you're talking about, yeah? yeah. Oh, shit. Um, which one of the Whiskey Tango hosts also worked at a supplement store that looks like he's never trained? Yeah. That's up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this all makes sense now. Plus, um, was he was he a GNC by chance? No, uh, he was a Popeyes. Oh, guy. he looked like a GNC type of guy. <laughs> hey, don't look at me. <laughs> it's, uh, oh shoot, what's that? Not Nutrition Plus. Oh yeah, on on Pemina. I not that one. Oh, because uh, back in the day, that was the original plug. Um, oh yeah. There's nutrition something whatever. I ruined the joke. Not funny. Um. But no, you you, you got to do your your rehab stuff first. Mm-hmm. Um, that being said, you have to monitor and make sure that you're working hard enough because they'll keep you in there longer than you need to be. Most of them, not the good ones. Yeah. Um, but then then I think you need to to find the right coach with the right program, um, and then just kind of attack it, and don't be don't be in a rush, but don't be a pussy. That makes sense. You hurt that yourself? makes sense. Yep. I often, yeah. often find am, am I back, talking to you? Yeah, you are talking. A lot okay, of back yeah. injuries also come from like you injure your back, um, just doing something minor. It often comes from just having a very weak core, very weak. That's kind of what it, I've been doing. Is yeah. I, I was deadlifting. I felt something a little weird. And I'm like, ah, it's it's just tight. I'm just gonna let it relax. And then I was squatting, and all of a sudden I just felt a little. Boop. Oh, like, your balls oh. dropped. What's that? No, my balls. balls it might have been. So Hit then, the K uh, box. So, what's that? Hit the K box. I that's uh, I'm going to be doing that for a bit, but uh, yeah. So I started um, just kind of getting back into it by yeah. just doing core stuff and like light, but still doing the same movements, just not as ridiculous, just more reps, less weight, and mm-hmm. just trying to strengthen everything back up again. And I was wondering yeah. if I was doing that, going about it wrong or not. Was it ever assessed, or are you just no kind of pain management right now? Just pain management. Well, it's not even in pain anymore. It's actually like pretty much so feels, just feels back to normal oh, okay. yeah it's, yep. yeah then i'd I, I mean i'd keep working on glutes erectors mm-hmm. that's all postural that. movements um a lot of like back and hip extension with with longer holds um and then again with with ab slash core work whatever you want to call that everyone's got a different name for yeah, it. yeah and i find guys where well, they often tweak their backs i'm guilty of this they tweak and you kind of hunch over and then you just your hip flexors get super over tight because you're always leaning forward for me it's sitting in a chair all day at the office yeah, of my truck sure. which then gives you a ton of back pain to begin with that you think is your back but it's actually it's, it's pulling from somewhere else well the, the tight hips and the tight psoas creates an anterior pelvic tilt yeah which puts a ton of pressure on your low back and then when you finally get a chance to open it up, uh, that's when it hurts. Or if you don't actually like injure it, just that pressure on your low back from the angle of your pelvis, people think their back hurts and completely neglect the fact that uh, the anterior is just incredibly tight. That's literally what I'm dealing with, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah. Makes sense? Yeah. Going back to st- straw men, yeah. um, since straw and petty. Um, <laughs> we, don't want, we don't want dad to scream at us. Yeah. Tyler's going to yell at me for this. <laughs> you guys are nothing without me. And, and uh, uh, I had a video chat with Magnus today. Uh, he gave me a call this morning. So we had a chat about uh, the Gimli show. Because we're still kind of up in there on what's happening for the season. Um, I guess the official Gruntle pulled the plug on. So we have a match with Strongest Man and Gruntle we did the last two years. Yeah. Um, and that show's actually it's not going to happen this year. So that sucks. Oh, that's been I've been putting shows on there I think since 2017. 
Um, um, that's where I actually started promoting shows. Yeah, that's yeah. So um, last year, is so there an I, explanation with that? Yeah, or? yeah. They so they're they're restructuring the fair a bit. They always ran. We were always on the Saturday, which is the biggest crowd, and we we had, we drew a big crowd. And this last year, they put us in a Sunday, maybe the year before too. And what they're finding is, Grotta Fair used to be just three days: Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then a couple of years back, many years back, they added the bull riding on Thursday. And now with inflation and the cost of everything that's going on, families can't afford to go to the fair Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday with kids, right? You got you got husband and wife with three I mean, kids. Dang, that's a lot of fair. That's a lot of fair. And it's, and it's let's say it's 10 fair bucks enough. a day per person. Yeah, you're four. Yeah, fair enough. Holy shit. <laughs> that's the Sorry, last I'll of this shit. Right no, so I mean, it's 200 bucks for a weekend, right? Well, Lots of families are still working at 20 bucks an hour for a single income. It's, it's not easy to do anymore. So yeah. they're finding the attendance on Sunday is really plummeting. Um, so they're going to cut, um, maybe I shouldn't know, but whatever. They're going to cut the programming for Sundays and just do the churches. They do a big community church service there every Sunday. And we always rolled in after church and did our show. So they're cutting that. Um, and with the events they already have from years back, there's not enough room to run us on the Saturday. That just, it just, there's too much going on in the fairgrounds. So, they're trying to figure out maybe if there's a different weekend we can do it, just a, a one-off show in the fairgrounds. But as of right now, the Gruntle show is dead. Do you tell them it's bunk? Yeah, it sucks. That's where I started my promoting. That was my first yeah. show. Um, I run another every year. It's a hometown crowd for me. So I'm glad I did compete last year, not not a lot. So two years ago, um, that was really good for me. That was fun. That's the one you won? Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, that's pretty cool. That's shitty, and, and, and so it is what it is. But now we got... So I'm working with Gimli still because we're still looking at doing the Magnus show there. And we're just trying to figure things out on whether – is there any other qualifiers Magnus wants to run? So we had that chat this morning. Me and Magnus for a while had a long phone mm. call. And, um, he's always fun to chat with. Um, he video chats where he gives me a call and we just shoot the shit. It's, 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 he's, you know, it's funny. You see these guys. Oh, he's a four-time World Stress Man. And it's, they just – me and him chat just as if we know each other for years. Right? Same when he came here to the podcast. Yeah. It's just shoot the shit, crack a bunch of jokes, talk talk some shit, and just whatever. Right? Yeah. And maybe I just bring that out of people because I don't. You, you are good at that. Yeah. I'm not a, a starstruck kind of guy. I'm just, yeah. let's just, you're a normal human being. Let's hear some funny stories. Yeah. <laughs> like that's... Uh, Chris, Chris and I, McDowell, used to joke. Um, and I mean, I had <clears throat> Tate and Wendler on, on such a pedestal. And, yeah. and I think Chris held him in the same regard, maybe not as high as me. Um, but Chris had his thing with Pollockin and. Uh, we, for lack of a better word, we, we kind of idolize these guys and, and you're like, they're celebrities, Yeah, but they're celebrities in a very niche market. Yes. Um, but, but until you step back and, and realize that they're a celebrity in my mind. Yeah. But no, 90% of my friends don't know who they are. Yeah. There's a big chunk of people in, in gyms across the world who don't know who they are. And so when you when you meet them and you just dumb it down, it's just like you're just a dude who likes what I like. It's way easier to just chat with them. Yeah, and know? that's what they prefer. Totally. Nine percent of the time they don't want to, or most of, most of them don't want to be don't like the the the, the fame or the, don't treat me differently. Just treat me as if you know. Let's just bullshit about whatever, yeah. right? Ultimately, so. what I'm trying to say is like Pat. Next time you're around me, you don't have to be so timid. It's just talk to me like a regular guy. <laughs> I know you look up to me physically, <laughs> <laughs> physically and. <laughs> and his strength but yeah so i had a chat with him with the gimli show um still got some things iron out there um we're just trying to figure out the season me and tyler trying to tyler's falcon. A- hey do provincials at falcon falcon lake yeah that'd be wild eh? i mean it's a summer town we in can make sand. that happen in the sand why not i've always Park, wanted to do a, the golf course i've always wanted a beach show at, but i don't know if i don't know how that would run a provincial park whether you need certain sanctioning or certain insurance clauses parking lot of the golf course yeah, that'd be pretty there's cool. a ton a of options lot. out there. There is actually that'd be a ton of fun. Uh, well, there's also the like the, the gravel parking lot by the mall there. I know it's yeah. gravel, but I mean it's huge. Don't they have? There's that new beach house there. Not new, but the last couple of years they built that cafe and stuff there. Well, that's where we had uh, Whiskey Tango Fest. Yeah, the, was yeah, there. yeah. So, that was great. There was a parking lot behind that. Yeah, and, well, there's actually a big field behind there too. Well, we got like like Lane's trying to let, or he's work, he's going to happen one in Roblin, Manitoba. But that'll be a nice thing he's working on. Yeah, you know, we still got Vita. Uh, we still got Tolstoy, the novice show. Um, and it's just so it's just a matter of figuring out. And then Morris, right? We had Rumble in the Valley last year, the pro am. Yeah. Um, I don't know what I'm doing that, and I'm trying to figure that out. I, to be honest, talk about things, but I have no interest in running a pro am again. No. Uh, no. The way last year's went, man, it was we had two pros. Month. Love Jeffers. He always supports. It seems to support a lot of the stuff we do, which I really like him for. And there's some other. It was it was bad with timing, but yeah. You you put a pro on show and you put that kind of money into show and you get two pros up. It was Tyler and Jeffers. Yeah. Um, and no pro woman came out. 
Um, yeah. And I just, for the amount of money, it's a you know a thousand bucks to sanction the show. You got to give out a couple thousand prize money. You know, your budget goes to ten thousand dollars to put on a show. That didn't draw the people I thought it would, and it's just a lot so, of extra work. So, question: Do you think maybe you have to eat shit a couple years before it catches on? You know. Like say Maybe. say this year is is Tyler Jeffers and and two others. Well, Dan would be in now, so you'd and, have three. And then third year, there's ten. Like, yeah, is there is there growth and and is it worth it to you to? The, so that's it. There would be growth. The problem is, um, from a promoting standpoint right now, and maybe you know Tyler seems to be uh, picking up a lot of the reins, a lot of stuff because his his business is his gym. Yeah, Tyler's business is his coaching, his gym. That's that's Tyler. Um, where I I've always done this as not a means to income as, as a hobby. Yeah. And until until I mean you got the body that says that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the, the hobby body. It's like hobby lobby, but not. Um, I've always done it. You know, every year, every dime that I made on a strongman show, I put back into prize money. Even last year, Magna show, I finally could have paid my own lodging, and I gave away the prize money for the athletes that flew in. And you didn't bring it up once. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> but it, it, it's it's a matter of there would be growth, but am I willing to put in? If I had a promotion company, if I was doing this as a job and I was making money from promotions on other comps, that I could offset it, it would make sense then. Okay, you know, this is going to be a 10-year plan that we're going to build the sport. To a degree, we're having massive pro shows in Manitoba that are profitable. Then it makes sense in promotion. I don't think I have that in me anymore. I feel like the Arnold, but we have the Devon. The Devon. The Devons. Yeah. I qualified for well, the Devon. No, I, I did get asked to do a show. There, There is talks, I'm not going to say from who, but there is talks now about a show coming to Winnipeg this year. Um... Not at that size, but that type of show. Uh, bodybuilding, powerlifting, strongman, CrossFit. Um, they've looked like the Victoria Inn. Like, it's a massive event there. And I've been, I've been uh, in talks with them because um, they want me to put on the strongman side. But they want to have a massive two- or three-day convention with sponsors coming and boost set up supplements, kind of like a mini Arnold's or a mini Olympia Nothing type thing. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, so mm-hmm. that, there is talks that come to Winnipeg this year. Um, it's not it, – no, so I'm not going to say from here, but I have been consulting that. And it's, it's something I'm looking into. So I think that's kind of cool. And that's, that's that guy's business is he's starting to do these type of shows at a smaller scale than Arnold, but these type of shows, and that's his business. Yeah. Um, so that makes sense. And could I put the Morse show on? And, and Morse was a great venue. We had a huge crowd. Morse was fun. Yeah. Besides the point of the semi breaking through the asphalt, it went really well. <laughs> um, and the guy brought that up. He's like, well, if we're at a pro, maybe we just don't do the semi since we learned that the hard way. I'm like, yeah, it's Brian's good guy from the, the store there or from the Stampede. No, it wasn't Stampede, but we also talked about that. Do him at the Stampede yeah. maybe. <laughs> So we got to shuffle around, see what's going to happen for the show. We will have our two qualifiers um, this year, minimum, plus provincials. And then I'm hoping we get a good chunk of guys going to nationals. I'm hearing talks of guys not wanting to go to nationals because it's New Brunswick and the flights. I mean, what's the most expensive place to fly to in Canada? It's the East That's Coast. Yeah. Um, but I, I keep saying, like, those guys all flew up to nationals here in Winnipeg. I mean, Winnipeg's kind of shitholes you can fly here kind of cheap. But a lot of guys doing this as a sport, like you said, hey, why don't you commit to sport where you're going to spend your money for no, for nothing? Yeah. That's literally, you're going to compete all year, 65 bucks a comp plus your membership fees, you know, so you're going to be three or 400 bucks in, in, in fees just to get to nationals, another 200 nationals, and then you're going to spend our $2,000 to get to nationals? Head to toe Ray-Ban. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> People well, now wear that? I, you know what? Oh, those Ray-Ban sleeves, my, my blue ones I bought back in 2010, yeah. uh, my elbow sleeves just ripped. No way. Um but a month or two months ago, they, they finally tore. Just I put them on, and they just tore at the seam. And I'm like, 13 years. And I competed Get a with box those. Frame for them. Like, yeah, dude. I'm up in the gym. They were my favorite. I, I bought um, Mark Bell's strong ones. Yeah. I hated them. Did they fit like shit? Um, I bought S- SBD. I know they're a big sponsor, Tyler. I didn't like the fit of those. I might give those a shot again. Um, I've bought all sorts. I have Evolution right now, but their size and chart is so stupid. Yeah. Um, I bought. Me and Tyler, me and uh, Brian, I bought 2XL arm sleeve and, and 3XL. The 3XLs are loose and the 2XL is so tight I need someone else to help pull them on. Well, that's kind of a weird sizing chart. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. I think you got them off Timu. Yeah. So, no, my Ray-Bans last me 13 years. Yeah. Uh, I still use the new ones. They're great. Yeah. Wash them in borax. There's a mix you could use. Really? It's the, oh, it's disgusting. You throw them in there they just turn so brown in the water. <laughs> but, no, Stroma's still looking good for Manitoba. Um, I think Rumble, if we do a prime, you could. You could build it up or two or three years and make it a good staple. Kind of like Re- Re- Regina did that with Westerns. They just kept building it and it turned into the premier show in Western Canada ever do. Yeah. Still, and it's always will be. Yeah. Um, or at least in the near future. Deb, but. you kind of piqued my interest here. What exactly do you need to, if we were to try and put one on a Falcon Lake, what would you need? What would be like the specifications? It's just, honestly, it's just cash. Okay. Um, a, a low level show generally still cost three grand. 
like just for a qualifier. It's probably what we put into it. Okay. Uh, prize money, shirts, um, equipment, yada, yada, two to three grand minimum, probably three grand. Yep. Um, you're on a pro am show, then you're like seven to ten. Yeah, I think and I, if it's a I, circuit, I think it's, it's possible. Yeah, it's if def- it's a circuit it's show, like Tyler's on the circuit, and he knows more about the circuit stuff than me, because I never put on a circuit show. Um, a circuit show, you have to cover all the lodging for the athletes coming in, all the pros. There's no entrance fees, so you don't get the entrance fees competitor, and you have to pay their lodging, their hotels. Okay, uh, that's all part of being a pro. You get you get some perks, right? Sure. Um, which makes sense. You're you're and and JF Cron's done a great job of building that up. I think I was reading. The, uh, he put a poll saying the circuit started in 2014, uh, so this should be 10 years. I think he's done a great job of building that up. Um, and giving back to the athletes, which is which is a goal. Cool. And in the last couple of years, Strom has turned into a bit of a mainstream sport in a lot of aspects. Rogue has done a ton of work with that to give us the the the, the platform, right? The Arnold's, these massive shows, Rogue's put in a ton. I couldn't imagine they must be in a couple million dollars already in their promotional shit to get Strom and going. Yeah. But now it's finally getting recognition. You know, what's kind of funny. Uh, I find it funny, anyways. Is CrossFit started growing, and everyone kind of shit on it, myself included. Oh, I'm um, yeah, I'm in there. And I I truly believe that the growth of CrossFit fed the growth of strongman and powerlifting. Yeah, I believe that. Both mm-hmm. sports have to thank That's hard CrossFit. to admit, but it, it's a, it's, it's the it's, the tough to swallow pill. Yeah. But if it drew people to strength sports in a different And that's what aspect. it is. And Other then, than us guys sitting and watching World Strongest Man reruns on yeah. you know, channel whatever. Yeah, so you start watching this this CrossFit stuff and and they're doing farmers. Mm-hmm. People look into that, and and then you're like, oh, there's the sport where I don't have to do all the stuff I don't like. Yeah, that just does, I, I like. Yeah, and then just because you're seeing people exercising on, on TV and, and and squatting, and then you accidentally find out about powerlifting, and and I, I think it has really helped both. And then Rogue being such a machine for it, selling gear for all this stuff. Yeah, a lot of people just go to Rogue because they saw it on TSN. Yeah, and then they're like, oh, the, these other things exist. Um, and that's, that's one of the, that one of the harder things to admit a few years ago was that CrossFit has really fueled all of this. Well, 10 years ago, you couldn't buy farmer walks. Yeah. You couldn't find it. Even, even the training ones, we all, like when I started my stuff, I got, my uncle did steel piling. So he had his pile of cut off steel piles and I just measured per foot what they weigh and cut myself implements and put handles on them. And that was my, I made yoke farmers, everything out of just steel piles that I weld together with a shit welder about the things were breaking. Cause I don't know how to weld. Yeah. Like, but that's how it was. You couldn't go to rogue or Cerberus or, you know, SBD or all these websites and just order your equipment. You had to make it. Yeah. And there was no specs online. Oh no. There's not, what's a far book. Oh, I think the height looked like it was mid shin here. We'll just run a handle at this inches. Right. Like, yeah. and, and that, that's what made it so fun. Where yeah. guys wouldn't be, you know, we've mentioned before guys being like, well, I need to know every implement that's going to be at the show and the height of the picks and how it moves. And no, like, I like the days where you just show up and go. Yeah. And I'm guilty of wanting to know every implement too because I want the best advantage. But there was something you said about the guys who just showed up. The guys like Luke Scarif that just rolled through shows from east to west. And, you know, he would do like a two-week window and just yeah. roll through a bunch and win them all. Not trained with any of the spe- specific implements. You just, just roll through. Driving and competing. Yeah. That, that was like yeah. Luke's summer vacation. Pack up the wife and kids and we're like, Ladies, yeah. we're driving and competing. <laughs> yeah, uh, you still that. follow him though? No? Uh, no, I haven't talked to him in a long time. I follow I his stuff. Yeah, his yeah. son's playing some high level football now. That's not surprising. Yeah, yeah, it seems to be. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So no, he was always fun to watch and compete with. Yeah, it's it's there's something we said about that, but yeah, that kind of what's happening in our season. Oh, guys, listen to the show just to find out what's going on our season. So yeah, um, some announcements to come out soon enough. Registrations will open soon for the novice and the log. I'm sure Tyler's. I thought Tyler's log would be open. I know he was waiting on a pollster, so I'm sure that's coming in the next week here. Yeah. Uh, novice show will be answering soon. For anybody listening, uh, if you're interested in the novice comp, I have uh, Sunday afternoons we're putting on some events at my gym, just novice stuff. You can come try it out. It's a $10 drop-in fee. Um, message me for details. I'll let you in. I'm just coaching the guys for free. Just give me advice. It's, it's fun for me to give back that way. And uh, But I got the power stairs inside. Um, brought a bunch of the equipment inside. So we can start training for us. Any of the guys, even from Iron Age, Brickhouse, any of the strongman gyms in Winnipeg and Manitoba, um, Winkler, Jan Seed, wherever you are. If you want to try the power stairs, they're set up inside of my gym now. So you guys can come try them out, get ready for the novice comp. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's dope. Yeah. Never done power stairs. No? Never tried, never never had a, a show that had them. Yeah, well, until I um, built Brand Tiz, there never was one in, yeah. in Manitoba there. Didn't we have them at Teddy Bob's? The Teddy Bob show? Yeah, that was the power stairs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 
the infamous Teddy Bob show. It's <laughs> my best show ever. That's it's one of my favorite stories. So good. <laughs> that show was something else, man. Yeah. Yeah. First show ever. Probably the most memorable show I'll ever do. But I see we called there. Yeah. Let's give a shout out to our sponsor, Jeremy Weens Realty. Check them out again, guys. Now I can say my house. We signed the documents, condition removed. That house is sold, so it was sold within four days. We can finally officially say it. Man, it's got to get Yeah. Weens, uh, Jeremy Weens Realty. Uh, he had he did a Weens World podcast too, a little thing uh, promoting local business, which is really cool on YouTube. You guys can hit that up. Um, he's on Facebook too. Look him up. Coldwell Banker out of Steinmetz, where he runs out of. Okay. Um, he does all of Man- all South of Manitoba, Winnipeg, White Shell. Uh, if you're looking for a realtor, I'll tell you guys. He's. He, he puts in a ton of work. He puts in more work than any realtor I know. And I have friends of realtors that'll hate that I say that, but um, he does he does good work. Um, good to know. Beakley Mobile, Devin Panner, Training Gals Gym, Wellness 365. Petty, Wellness 365. Oh, man, you're small today. Uh, Iron Age, <laughs> Chud Life. <laughs> uh, <laughs> on that note. Yeah. Like and follow on YouTube. Yes, comment on our shit. It costs you nothing. Hit the follow button. Yep. You, you won't even notice that you did it. Uh, it does a lot for us. changes your life. None even hate all. comments. Yeah. Give us some hate comments. Comments on YouTube, any, yeah. Any, any traction, traction. Bitch about my three-hour seminar so I can get buttered about it. <laughs> um, give some feedback. Love you we, guys. We should have one sec. One episode on each show. Or we, we just record one and post it on both of just Devin and Denzel. Oh. <gasps> I love that. Just violence. Oh, that'd be so I just, good. I don't even know where it would go. <laughs> It'd be great. I think I really honestly, because he is so full of high energy, and well, Devin, so are you, so I'd love to just see the back and forth. And the second you guys. you guys locked three of the four eyes, he would absolutely soil his gotch. <laughs> well, I could probably lock eyes with his whispering out with my left one. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. On that note, uh, keep listening. Thanks for, for listening, and we'll see you next week. See you next week, boys.